Alright, thanks for watching and welcome to our fourth way of calculating the Gaussian integral. Today I would like to call it the Feynman way because it's very similar to the Feynman technique. I mean, I don't know actually what the Feynman technique is. I'm not a physicist, but still. But haha, surely you must be joking, Dr. Pi Man. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Enough fun, even though this is pretty fun. So, as usual, let j be the Gaussian integral, integral from zero to infinity of e of negative x squared dx. And this time, we would like to consider some auxiliary function. So consider the following function, which depends on t. f of t is equal to integral from zero to infinity of e of minus t squared 1 plus x squared over 1 plus x squared dx. Okay. If you look at my other videos about this, well, somehow this function appeared over and over again. So let's use it again, just knowing already what the answer will be. And also, because we integrate with respect to x, this indeed becomes a function purely of t. Well, and now let's just see what happens as t goes to 0 and t goes to infinity. So first of all, f of 0 equals to the integral from 0 to infinity. If you plug in t equals to 0 here, you get e of 0, which is 1. And so this becomes integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared from 0 to infinity. And that is just arctangent of infinity minus arctangent of 0. And that's just pi over t. And by the way, I forgot to say, don't, this is not my idea, it's Keith Conrad's idea. And you should look at these notes, they're pretty amazing. So, on the one hand, f of 0 is pi over 2. On the other hand, if you plug in t equals to infinity, notice at every point this function becomes 0. And it's not clear if the integral still goes to 0 but by what's called the dominated convergence theorem is actually okay. So indeed, f of infinity equals to integral from zero to infinity of zero dx, and that's zero. So I calculated the endpoints, and now let's calculate the derivative with respect to t, and you're probably knowing what I'm going to do afterwards. Of course, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's do that. So f prime of t, again, it's very dangerous to differentiate under the integral, but because this function goes to zero pretty quickly, I think it's okay. That's integral from zero to infinity. Let's differentiate that using the Chen Lu. So we get e of negative t squared, one plus x squared, and then minus 2t, 1 plus x squared over 1 plus x squared dx. The nice thing is this bad term, 1 plus x squared, it disappears. And then you're left with, let's see, e of negative t squared, which just pulls out of the integral because it doesn't depend on x. So e of negative t squared, integral from 0 to infinity, and then e of negative t squared x squared, which we can just write as e of negative tx squared dx, and this term minus 2t, which you can just pull outside because it doesn't depend on t at all. Sorry, it doesn't depend on x at all. And notice this just calls for u sub. So of course, let y be tx and see what happens here. y equals to tx, then that's usual, dy is t dx, and then let's see, y at 0, so if x equals to 0, this is just 0, and if x is, let's say, what was it, uh, infinity, then let's see, uh, yeah, if x is infinity, this should also be infinity, so y of infinity equals to infinity. 
So in other words, our bounds are unchanged, and in the end, what we get is that the integral becomes, so minus 2t, e of minus t squared, integral from 0 to infinity, e of minus y squared, and then, well, uh, dy is t dx, so dx is 1 over t dy, and the t's cancel out, and we get minus 2 e of minus t squared, integral from 0 to infinity, e of minus y squared dy. And you may say, where is our Gaussian integral? Well, here it is. Here is where it appears, because before, there was no Gaussian interval there. So, what we get is that this equals to, so f prime of t equals to minus 2 e of minus t squared j. Okay, so what do we have? We have f of 0, f of infinity, and f prime of t. Now let's just use the ftc, so integral from 0 to infinity of f prime of t dt equals to, by this formula, integral from 0 to infinity minus 2 e of minus t squared j dt and this becomes f of infinity minus f of 0 minus 2j comes out and we get minus 2j times integral from 0 to infinity of e of minus t squared dt. And lo and behold, this is so beautiful, j appears again. So what do we have? So f of infinity was just 0. f of 0 was pi over 2. Again, by those calculations here, pi over 2 and then 0. And so, 0 minus pi over 2 equals to minus 2j times j, so minus 2j squared. And so in particular, the minuses disappear. You divide by 2, and you get j squared equals to pi over 4. And again, j is positive, so j is squared of pi over 2. Which is yet another way of finding the Gaussian integral. How cool is that? So again, no, uh, yeah, no multivariable calculus involved. Just purely single variable calculus. And hopefully Feynman will be proud of us. If it's Feynman's technique, I, I still don't know. But <laughs> all right. So if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.